Welcome my dear learners for this course on design of machine elements 1. So far we have completed our discussion on design of for static strength. Continuing from the point where we have stopped, let us start a new topic from today's lecture that is stress concentration. What is the meaning of stress concentration? How to reduce stress concentration? Let us learn in today's topic and also let us solve a numerical problem on stress concentration in today's lecture. Moving forward, stress concentration may be defined as the localization or accumulation of maximum stress because of irregularities or material discontinuity is called as stress concentration. I repeat once again, stress concentration may be defined as stress concentration may be defined as localization or accumulation of maximum stress accumulation of maximum stress because of or due to irregularities and discontinuities Stress concentration may be defined as localization or accumulation of maximum stress because of irregularities or discontinuities. The cause of this accumulation is termed as stress raisers. The cause of the cause of accumulation of stress is termed as stress raisers is termed as stress raisers these stress raisers are because of geometric discontinuity load discontinuity or material discontinuity these stress raisers are because of Stress raisers are due to first one is geometric discontinuity, geometric discontinuity, second one is load discontinuity. And third one is material discontinuity. Material discontinuity. The geometric discontinuity examples are such as notches, fillets, notches, fillets, or we can have grooves. Keyways, threads, etc. Keyways, threads, etc. These are examples for geometric discontinuity. These geometric discontinuities are acts as stress raisers which causes accumulation or localization of maximum stress. And these points are acts as the initiators for crack. And this crack will propagate over a duration of time and failure of the material will occur. So therefore, we want to mitigate the stress concentration. Before moving ahead for the concept of reducing or mitigation of stress concentration, let us understand how to measure stress concentration. Before moving ahead to measure stress concentration, the load discontinuity may be defined as sudden change from concentrated load, load to uniformly distributed load or change from the magnitude of uniform distributed load to a higher magnitude of uniformly distributed load or sudden change 
from uniformly distributed load to uniformly varying load the point where the change occurs acts as the stress riser and similarly coming for material discontinuity we might observe combination of more than one material such as a one object made up of aluminium and cast iron the point where the material changes can act as stress riser and st these stress risers are cause for accumulation of maximum stress now coming for measurement of stress concentration stress concentration is measured based on stress concentration factor which is defined as it is measured based on stress concentration factor stress concentration factor which is denoted by k suffix t that is theoretical stress concentration factor t stands for theoretical stress concentration factor stress concentration factor kt theoretical is defined as maximum stress to nominal stress the theoretical stress concentration factor is defined as the ratio of maximum stress to nominal stress as you people already learned nominal stress is given by force by area for direct stress bending moment divided by section modulus for pure bending stress and tr by j for torsional shear stress that is the nominal stress is given by sigma nominal sigma nominal is equal to force by area for direct tensile stress or for direct compression stress it is given by the ratio of bending moment to section modulus for pure bending case or else it is also given by torque into radius divided by j tr by j is the formula for torsional shear stress so this is for direct tensile or compressive stress this is for pure bending and this is for torsional shear stress so using this we can find what is the magnitude of maximum stress once we find the stress concentration factor kt so this is theoretical stress concentration factor this depends only on magnitude of geometric discontinuities such as holes fillets notches the magnitude of these holes fillets notches affect the theoretical stress concentration factor whereas actual stress concentration factor which accounts for discontinuity in loading and discontinuity discontinuity in material the theoretical stress concentration factor and actual stress concentration factor are related by the equation ktf is equal to 1 plus q times kt minus 1 so this is the relationship between actual stress concentration factor and theoretical stress concentration factor where q is called as notch sensitivity index where q is called as notch sensitivity index and this is the relationship between actual stress concentration factor and theoretical stress concentration factor with this very brief note on stress concentration let us discuss how to mitigate or how to reduce stress concentration coming for methods to reduce stress concentration next moving ahead for methods to reduce methods to reduce stress concentration where in which we can have bad design and good design bad design and good design first one is using additional holes instead of having only one hole in the material that is using additional hole additional holes like if i have only one hole in a material this can cause accumulation of maximum stress around this hole and the crack might initiate when it is loaded axially from the circumference of this hole and crack will propagate and material will fail 
in order to avoid this i can have additional holes like this so this is good design this is because of the reason the flow lines of this loading will be somewhat uniformly distributed if i have additional holes next is using notches instead of shoulders that is sharp edges using notches instead of shoulders or sharp edges instead of shoulders we can use notches that is avoid having sharp edges instead of having sharp edges we can use notches like this sorry using fillets i'm extremely sorry it is using fillets instead of shoulders notch is different notch is a mid geometric discontinuity i'll speak about that using fillets instead of shoulders avoid sharp edges and provide fillets like this provide blunt edges next is using multiple notches using multiple notches can mitigate stress concentration using multiple notch can mitigate stress concentration that is if i have a notch like this a single notch in a specimen or in a shaft use multiple notches for good design like this like this we can use multiple notches which provides uniform distribution of flow lines when it is loaded next use larger diameter threads using larger diameter threads using larger diameter threads using larger diameter threads that is if i have a threading like this instead of having smaller diameter threads let us have larger di diameter threads like this thread diameter should be larger so like this try to have larger diameter for threads next is by combining notches and fillets combining notch and fillet is a good design the bad design is that having different notch and fillet like this i mean different fillet and notch combine these two that will give you a good design like this
so instead of having fillet and notch at farther distance in a material have combined it together that will gives us a good design and finally i can have undercut shoulders undercut shoulders will also reduce stress concentration undercut shoulders that is already we have sharp edges like this which is a bad design just now i have discussed so this is a bad design instead of which we can have undercut like this having this undercutting will reduces the stress concentration so these are few notes on how to reduce stress concentration or how to mitigate stress concentration now in order to measure this theoretical stress concentration either we can go for analytical method by using theory of elasticity or we can conduct experiments such as photo elasticity finite elements method soap film method etc we are not doing any of these thing we are not conducting analytical approach using theory of elasticity to find stress concentration or we are not conducting experimental investigation using photo elasticity or finite element method etc instead of which we have ready reference values tabulated tabulated in the form of graphical representation for various loading cases and for various geometric discontinuities in our design data handbook written by k mahadevan and k balaver reddy fourth edition referring to this data handbook depending on the material discontinuity or geometric discontinuity and also type of loading we can refer to the graph and take out directly what is the value of stress concentration taking the value of stress concentration factor we can determine what is the value of maximum stress or we can also design what is the preferable thickness or diameter of the shaft required to withstand the predefined stress value let me pause this video for a while so that you people can copy it down later we'll solve our problem number 1 on stress concentration now moving ahead to solve problem we can re refer our design data handbook for stress concentration problems from figure 2.11 page number 36 to figure 2.30 page number 45 so from figure 2.11 starting from page number 36 to figure 2.30 ending at page number 45 we have various graphical representations for stress concentration factor these stress concentration factors are represented for various dimensions or geometric dimensions of fillets notches etc and depending on various types of loading we are discussing on direct tensile or compression pure bending and pure torsion loading cases now let us solve problem number 1 which states that determine the maximum stress in the following cases taking stress concentration into account in that the first case is a rectangular plate of 50 mm cross 80 mm with a hole of 10 mm diameter in the center is loaded in axial tension of 10 kN thickness of the plate is 10 mm so the pictorial representation is not given for case a and case b of problem number 1 let us draw the pictorial view of case a we have if i move for solution of problem number 1 under that case 1 we have a rectangular plate we have a rectangular plate of dimension 50 mm 50 mm cross 80 mm 50 mm cross 80 mm rectangular plate having hole of 10 mm diameter exactly at the center we have a hole 
of 10 mm diameter exactly at the center it is 10 mm and we have axial tensile loading the magnitude of load is 10 kilo newtons the magnitude of load is 10 kilo newtons and the thickness of this plate in the side view if i see the thickness the thickness of the plate is found to be 10 millimeters yes given and the plate thickness is specified as 10 millimeters let us call it as h or thickness t and this is equal to 10 mm so this is the case a problem of problem number one now always to solve problems on stress concentration or to find the stress concentration factor compare the given sketch with the figures 2.11 to 2.30 referring from page number 36 to page number 45 depending on the geometric discontinuity and the type of loading this is a rectangular plate with a hole subjected for axial tensile loading case so if i compare to this range of figures it is matching with figure number 2.12 referring to page number 36 so therefore from figure 2.12 of page number 36 which has rectangular plate with a hole subject for tension we have a graph of a by b ratio a by capital b where a stands for diameter of the wall and b stands for this width that is 50 mm so therefore if i substitute and solve it is 10 by 50 which is turning out to be 0.2 10 by 50 which is nothing but 0.2 now in the x-axis i will mark 0.2 and we have a curve passing like this looking at figure 2.12 we have a curve passing like this i will mark 0.2 on x-axis and project it to cut this curve like this and i will come horizontally if i come horizontally and measure i have stress concentration factor theoretical stress concentration factor kt in y-axis and which is found to be 2.5 which is found to be 2.5 hope it is clear refer figure 2.12 of page number 36 where he has clearly given the picture of rectangular plate with a hole subject for tension this hole diameter is noted, denoted as a and this width is denoted as capital b so now a by b ratio is found to be 10 by 50 which is 0.2 mark 0.2 on x axis project vertically upwards and intersect the curve come horizontally you will get the value of stress concentration factor kt which is found to be 2.5 for this case so now we know from definition of stress concentration factor theoretical stress concentration factor is defined as sigma max by sigma nominal correct sigma max by sigma nominal just now i have discussed before this problem now sigma nominal formula is also known which depends on type of loading case for direct tensile loading sigma nominal is given by force by area sigma nominal is given by force by area where area is not width into thickness width into thickness is only for uniform rectangular bar without any geometric discontinuity but we have circular hole in it so therefore the formula for area is given directly in the figure 2.12 referring to page number 36 of our data handbook where area is specified as capital B minus small a times the thickness. You can see this figure in page number 36 where in which he has specified the value of area. Now if I solve, I will get the value of sigma nominal as sigma nominal is equal to force is 10 kN that is 10 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by capital B is 50 minus whole diameter is 10 into thickness is 10 so therefore I will get 
the value of sigma nominal as 10 to the power of 4 divided by 14 to 10 which is nothing but 25 newton per millimeter square or 25 mega pascals i got the nominal stress as 25 mega pascals and stress con theoretical stress concentration factor as 2.5 hence the maximum stress will become sigma max will become kt times sigma nominal it is 2.5 times 25 hence sigma max will be 62.5 mega pascals 62.5 mega pascal so this is the solution for case a of problem number one this is how we should solve problems on stress concentration moving for case two of our problem number one that is a circular shaft of 45 mm diameter stepped down to 30 mm diameter having a fillet radius of 6 millimeters subjected to a twisting moment of 150 newton meter let us solve this case two of problem number one if I move for solution of case 2 of problem number 1, we have a circular shaft, we have a stepped circular shaft like this, which is initially at 45 mm diameter, initially at 45 mm diameter, which is stepped down to 30 mm diameter. which is stepped down, down, down to 30 mm diameter phi of 30 with a fillet radius with a fillet radius of 6 millimeters with a fillet radius of R6 fillet radius of 6 mm it is subjected for twisting moment it is subjected for twisting moment T so this is the given problem we have a stepped shaft stepping down from 45 mm to 30 mm with a fillet radius of 6 so we have geometric discontinuity we have a fillet of radius 6 so therefore this is the region of stress concentration now you know to analyze this as i said compare the given sketch to figures 2.11 to 2.30 and find out the suitable graph which matches with the given problem so if i do that i found that figure 2.27 figure 2.27 of page number 44 is the best match for the given problem where we have stepped shaft under torsion stepped shaft subjected for torsion so from figure 2.27 page number 44 stress concentration factor for stepped shaft under torsion stress concentration factor for stepped shaft stepped shaft subjected to torsion is given by figure 2.27 now if i carefully observe this graph x-axis has r by d ratio x-axis has r by d ratio that is radius is 6 and small d is 30 therefore i will get the value of R by D ratio as 0 0.2 0.2 now mark 0 0.2 the R by D ratio and we have a curves for capital D by small d so capital D by small d curve find the value of capital D by small d that is 45 by 30 
so if i do that 45 by 30 will yield us the value as 1.5 now we don't have curve for 1.5 we have curve for 2 we have curve for 2 and we have one more curve for 1.33 this is d by d ratio d by d curves so what we do from 0.2 we'll go in between these two mark a point in between these two no other choice between 2 and 1.3 you mark center and come horizontally like this so first you move up like this at 0.2 for 1.5 that is in between these two and come horizontally and intersect here we'll get the value as 1.23 we get the value as 1.23 so this is the value of theoretical stress concentration factor kt so now using the definition of theoretical stress concentration factor that is kt is equal to this is torsion so therefore we should use tau tau max by tau nominal because this is a torsional problem whereas case a is direct tensile stress case b is torsion so therefore stress concentration theoretical stress concentration factor is given by tau max by tau nominal now tau nominal torsional shear stress for a circular shaft is given by 16t by pi d cube this you people already know 16t by pi d cube where t is the torque but the torque is given in newton meters so convert it, to, it into newton millimeters how much is the value it is 150 newton meter is the given value so converting it i'll get 150 into 10 to the power of 3 Newton millimeter. Now, how to convert this is, I think you people know, but for those who are not well versed in converting these things, always remember multiply what is required and also opposite for that. That is, I want millimeters. Milli means ten power minus three, so I require ten power minus three. Therefore, multiply both what is required and opposite for that. what i mean to say is that 150 into 10 power 3 is the opposite and 10 power minus 3 is what i require millimeter 10 power minus 3 is what i require opposite for that is 10 power plus 3 this is newton meter now if i cancel these two i'll get the same answer now 10 power minus 3 meter can be written as millimeter and torque will become 150 into 10 to the power of plus 3 newton millimeter always remember whenever you want to convert unit conversions always multiply both what is required and opposite for what is required here i require 10 power minus 3 opposite for that is 10 power plus 3 i multiply both and simplifying which i'll get 10 power plus 3 newton millimeters now the torsional shear stress tau nominal will be 16 into 150 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by pi times always we should use smaller diameter because there is high chance that smaller diameter will fail first because the amount of metal present in smaller diameter is less compared to the larger diameter always preferably we choose smaller diameter shafts for design because once we design for smaller diameter obviously larger diameter can withstand the load so therefore 16 to 10 to the power of plus 3 divided by pi into d cube is 30 cube. Hence, nominal shear stress for the given problem is turning out to be 16 into 150 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by pi times 30 cube, which is 28.29 mega pascals. 28.29 mega pascals or newton per millimeter square now using the definition of 
theoretical stress concentration factor kt that is kt is equal to tau max by tau nominal which is 1.23 which is equal to tau max divided by 28.29 tau max for this problem will become 1.23 times this one that is 34.8 34.8 mega pascals or newton per millimeter square so this is the solution for problem number one wherein which we have solved two numerical problems on stress concentration factor one is on rectangular plate with a hole subjected for tension another one is stepped down shaft subjected for torsion that's all from this lecture thank you all